I yeah. got a view on the European stress test and overall all yeah. on global stress tests. Yeah, well, okay. we, we, okay. need to, we need to take it more serious and, and stricter than we did the first one. The first one actually was, was an easy, easy one. So uh, we need to be more serious or we lose simply credibility. Yeah. And what is being planned for this stress test for Europe? Is it serious enough? I believe it is. It's much better than the first one we saw, but we are still in the draft stage. So I still don't know what the real final version is going to be. So it's difficult to pass on a final test. What would you like to see in it? I would like to see a test after which you can really say the banks that have passed the test are stable and well capitalized. Mm -hmm. What banks in Europe do you think might not be capitalized well enough? Well, I take an easy ride and say the Irish ones, uh, uh, but I actually would not like to make now a, a comment in, in saying I prognose or I advise that the following banks will not pass the test because it depends on in part on what the final criteria are going to be. Uh, I was talking to a gentleman earlier this morning who was saying that these tests, in a sense, that Europe's going to do won't work again because they don't take into account, uh, they don't consider the possibility or what he considered certainty of default in, say, Greece or, or Portugal, Greece in particular, down the road. Do you think that these stress tests, when it comes to the banks, should be factoring in the prospect of a default in Greece? Now, you, you need to be careful. Exposure to. Yeah, yeah, I, I do understand. Uh, for as long as Europe, the European Commission has said that everything until 90, and sorry, 2013, uh, everything will be guaranteed. It is very difficult to stress uh, banks overall on, on whether or not they believe Greece will fail after that date. So first of all, the question is, until 2013, no European state can fail. Because, or if it fails, the European Commission has a bailout program. So uh, for 2000, until 2013, there is no need to stress test uh, uh, with, the, yeah, with, the, with the template uh, that, that you might have a, a loss or a cutoff. Gotcha. Do you think uh, Greece can actually possibly, af after 2013, for example, uh, avoid a restructuring of its debt? Let me give you one example. As far as I know, Greece has about 50 billion in euros to look forward to if it starts privatizing its publicly owned companies. And I would flatly refuse to talk about restructuring until I have seen what they do, you know, in order to, to handle their affairs on their own. Before you take somebody else's money uh, for a cutoff, I expect you that you have taken any given effort uh, to, to settle your own affairs. And so what would I like to say? Let them sell, let them privatize and let's see how much money is coming. And 50 billion is a big number for Greece. Yeah, well, how would you characterize the situation with sovereign risk in Portugal at the moment? I believe the Portuguese uh, have, have a, at least a solid chance uh, to, to, re to avoid a restructuring by simply taking the right steps and measures. But it's about high noon that they do. How would you uh, characterize the outlook for growth in Europe at the moment? If I, if I take the easy road and say we, we expect the German economy to, to be north of 3% once again, uh, which, will, which will in part, of course, be kind of a locomotive to other European economies, I would say we have a good chance to see a growth rate of 2% or better. Uh -huh. um, do you, uh, it looks almost certain that the ECB is going to raise rates on Thursday. Do you support ECB monetary policy? Yes, absolutely. And why is that? I believe it's the right step that the market needs a signal that the ECB is determined to, to fight inflation and we have extremely low interest rates. So an increase of, of 0.25 is nothing else but a gesture, but it shows ECB is serious uh, about its goals and is determined uh, to, to fight inflation if it comes to that. What do you make of this situation that uh, the Fed and the ECB are going separate ways, really, for the first time in a very long period? I believe that we have totally different scenarios uh, uh, across the Atlantic, so uh, to, to go in conjunction completely might not be exactly uh, what, is, what is necessary. So I don't take this as something that is disturbing me at all. Axel Weber, uh, lots of rumors that he may be uh, sort of joining a bank sometime in the future. Just an academic it is, question. It would, it, would, it, would, it, would a guy like him make sense at Commerce Bank? Oh, obviously, Axel Weber is, a, is a, an absolutely high-grade professional and, and somebody highly respected by the financial community around the globe and, and, and by, by politicians and people in, the, in academia. He takes now a one year off in, in Chicago to, to do teaching again. And after that, I'm sure that uh, he will take a decision on what to do. I believe he would be a great addition to any major bank in the world. Uh, and at Commerzbank? 
We are any, among any of them. <laughs> <laughs> and yourself, sir, how much longer do you want to remain chairman at Commerce Bank? Well, first of all, um, uh, we, we are elected for, for a period of five years, and my period is running until 2013. 2013? 13. Yeah, gotcha. May 2013. And all we right. take it from there. 